Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemag TV. In today's video for WordPress, I'm going to show you how you can go way beyond the basics of what WordPress offers you. So let's just say, for example, that you wanted to create a website that was based around your CD or DVD collection, and you wanted to be able to create custom post types where you could control exactly what information is going to be included. And then you want to go through and make sure where you can control exactly what's displayed on the front end of the website. Now, normally you would have had to have gone through and do this all manually and coded in the relevant pages and really got your hands dirty messing about with the underlying WordPress code. However, with plugins like Toolset, you can do this in a lot easier fashion. So in this video, we're going to be using Toolset, which has kindly sponsored this video. We're also going to be using Elementor or Elementor Pro and Ocean WP as the theme. So I'm going to take you through how you can use these three different plugins in combination to create your own custom taxonomy based website. Now we're going to keep it fairly simple for this first video, but in future videos, we will look at a lot more detail. So we're going to cover those simple basics where we can create our own taxonomies, create our own custom pages, use those inside Ocean WP, and then take Elementor or Elementor Pro to really get down and dirty and customize those pages to look exactly how we want them to. So let's just jump into WordPress and take a look at exactly how we can do all of this with those three plugins. So we've jumped into the admin section of WordPress and I've installed Elementor, installed Ocean WP, and I've also installed Toolset or the components that we need to get that up and running. Now Toolset ships with a lot of different options and I've just put the things that I need in there to get this all working. So the first thing we're going to do is use Toolset to set up our new section for WordPress. Then we'll take a look at how we can use that with Ocean WP and Elementor to create the pages that display the content we create. Okay, so if we come over to the Toolset option on the left hand side, you can see we've got a whole range of different options and tools inside there. What we're going to do to start off with is jump into the dashboard section. This gives us an overview of everything that's created when we create something, all the different setup stages that we have involved. So you can see we've got the WordPress admin on the left hand side, so all the different things that we need in there, the post type, the fields and the taxonomies. And on the right hand side we've got all the different front end elements, so the template that's going to use to display the page, the archive template and so on. So you can see if we take a look at the moment, there's a couple of default ones in here. We've got my library, so you can see nothing is set up. We have to create a field group and a create a taxonomy. We're also being told that there are no templates associated or created yet for this information. So we're getting a kind of visual representation at this point of exactly where we are in the process, what's being created and what hasn't. So what we're going to do to start off with, we're going to create a new post type. To do that, all we're going to do is click on add new post type at the top. That'll jump us into the add new post type section. Now this might look a little daunting to start off with, but once you slow down and take a look at what's going on there, really isn't that complex. So let's just take a quick look from the top to bottom and take a look at what we have available as part of this add new post type section. You can see in the first column we've got the ability to put in there the name, the plural, the singular and the slug for this particular new section. So whatever we choose to create, that's where we name it and give it the relevant different information. Underneath that, we've got the option for labels, and you can see we've got a whole range of different options. And the nice thing about dealing with Toolset is even though this looks quite daunting, every single entry gives you information underneath it about what it is, what you need to do. Now, most of these are pre-filled out, so you don't need to go through and insert everything, but you can update and change anything you think is needed to make sure you get a fully customized experience using Toolset in the admin of WordPress. If we scroll down, you can see we've got the taxonomies then to be used with either the post type, so we've got categories and we've got tags. Underneath that, we've got the post fields to be shown as columns in post type listing in WordPress admin. Again, we'll take a look at these things in more detail when we start to create our new content. If we then scroll down, you can see we've got what information do we want displayed on the actual page where we create our content. We want the title, the editor, but we can enable or disable comments, trackbacks, revisions, and so on. So again, we can really customize the page for the end user to create only the content that's required to be able to put in our new information. If we jump down, we've got options. Again, you can see a whole range of different options. The nice thing, like I say, is with the majority of this, you can leave it set up as is because it's kind of pretty much put everything you need in there to start off with. But if you need to go in there and start tweaking it, you have that option. 
Scroll down a little bit further, you can see we've got the post relationships, parent and child. If we scroll back up to the top, you can see we've got the option to specify where we want this in our admin navigation hierarchy. So in other words, on the left hand side, where do we want our new post type entry information to be inserted? So you may want to put this below posts, above posts, wherever you want to place it, you have that option in this right hand column. So for this example, for our demonstration, we're going to create an event diary. So we're going to need to put in events, dates, and so on. So let's start off by creating a new post type. So we've got this name in plural, so we're going to say events. Name in singular, event. And the slug, events is fine. If we want to add a description, we can do that at this point. And if we want to change the icon, we can also do that. So we let that load up and we'll see if we've got a calendar in here. That looks pretty good. We'll choose this one. So you can see that now sets the icon. Next up, we come over to the right hand side. We can sh show exactly where we want this to be. So I want this kind of at the top. So I'm going to say I want this to be after dashboard. And we'll go through now and just check anything else. So you can see we can set up any of the labels we want, but they all look good to me. So I'm just going to collapse that down. Taxonomy is to be used in the event. Well, we'll say we want to have categories. We want to have tags associated with it because then we can categorize our events and apply tags to them in much the same way as you can do with posts inside WordPress. Okay, so if we jump down to the next section, you can say, what do we want to display on there? Well, everything looks pretty good to me. I wouldn't mind a featured image. That looks fine. And if we come down to the options section, I think I'm going to leave everything as is in there. If I need to change anything, I can always jump back later on and take a look at it. But for now, that's fine. So we'll say, yep, everything looks good in there. So we'll say save post type. That will now go through, save our changes. So we've now got our post type created. We can now go through and assign templates to this. We can go in and start applying taxonomies to this. So we can really now start again and create exactly what we want to apply to our each individual event. So now that we've created and saved our new post type, you'll see that we get a couple of new options displayed in the edit post type page. You can see we've got the front end display block has popped up and telling us we don't have a template or an archive template associated with this particular page or type. And we've also got the module manager on the right hand side. We're going to leave the front end display for now. We'll come back to that a little later on. But the module manager is basically, if you wanted to share this new post type with other websites, you could use that to create a module and then you could load that module into other websites. So that's pretty cool. We'll also note if we take a look at the navigation structure in the admin section on the left hand side, our new events section is appearing there. So you can see that now pops up the new menu option on the left hand side and we've got all items add new as you'd expect to see in there. We also have categories and tags because we checked that to say the taxonomy needs to use those for this particular event section. So that gives us all the kind of options you'd expect like when you're dealing with posts. So that's pretty cool. We can now go through and set up all the different options you want available inside there to add in the different content that we want specific to our events. Now before we move on and start creating the different fields that we want as part of our events, you'll notice that if we go over events, it says all items as opposed to all events. Well, if you remember, we had the option for labels and we'd left those at default. Well, if we scroll down and open those up, scroll towards the bottom, you'll see it says all items and then it has the text for all items. So it makes a little more sense to keep in sort of continuity with what uh, WordPress itself does is to change that to all events. And what we can do is just scroll back up, save our post type, let that save that out. And if you go back up to our events view, you can see we now have all events. So it just makes a little bit more sense kind of thing in there. And what you can see is it's very easy to go back and easily change any of these settings that we've set up originally. So you have a lot of control over things. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we can start adding in the various different sections we want for our events. So we want things like maybe a map in there, you want the date, the title of it, all those different pieces of information. Well, we can put some of the basics in, but let's go through and add some of the extra fields that we want in there. So now that we've finished with our post type, let's just jump back over to the toolset dashboard again, and we'll see what we still need to do to get this fully fledged and working. So you can see now in the WordPress admin section, we fulfilled the first part, which is the post type, which is events. We now need to go through and set some fields up in there. You can also see that taxonomies is listed, and you can see that categories and tags is set in there. 
Now, we're not restricted to only having those. We can create any taxonomies that we want. Now, a taxonomy is just basically a group of options you can group together under a common name. So, categories is a list of all the different categories you could have an event or a post, anything like that, associate and grouped with. The same goes with tags. But you can create your own custom taxonomies if you want to. So if that's something that's applicable, you could do that. So you could have event type, for example, and you can have outdoor events, you could have indoor events, concerts, you know, anything you kind of want to group those together. So you could create a custom taxonomy and associate that with this particular post type as well. But for now, let's go through and create a field group. So if we click on create field group. That'll take us over and we can start creating the first field group that we want. So you can see this is a much simpler layout now. We've got just the name and description, where to include the field and add new fields in there. So we can go through the process of setting everything up. You'll also notice on the right hand side that we've got create a new module option like we had when we created our new post type. So we could, if we wanted to, once we set this up, save it out and we could then reuse it again and again and again. So there's lots of ways of being able to make sure that you can do things one time and then save that information out so you could do it again without having to go through the process of recreating everything step by step each and every time. OK, so let's start off now by creating our first post field group. OK, so let's go through and set everything that we need. So you can see that we've got the option to name this. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this event details. We're going to click to add a new field. You can see that now pops up and shows us all the different fields we have available that we can choose from. So let's start off first of all by saying that we want to insert the date. So we'll click on date. That will now go through and show us the new section that's going to be included and we can go and fill out the relevant pieces of information. So you can see we've got the field name. So we're going to put event date. Field slug, event date automatically pre-fills out in there. The date, it tells it the field type. So if we wanted to, we'd made a mistake. We could easily change that to any of the previous options. So you can see there's a range of different options in there. We can put a description if we want to, and we'll say event date details. Placeholder, do we want to enter a placeholder into there? Well, we'll leave it as it is. Input only the date, input the date and the time. So we're just going to keep this easy and just say we're going to put the date in there. Single or repeat in field, where well, this is going to be a single field. Validation, do we want to make sure that this is being validated? You can see we're going to validate, validate it to set to be required and what type of validation do we want? Entirely up to you, I'm going to leave those as they are. You can see with the option for conditional display. We've also got help icons on pretty much all of these different things. So if you kind of think, well, I'm not quite sure what it is you want me to do at this point, take your mouse over that and it'll tell you exactly what to do. You'll also notice that by default, this is put into post type events. If that's wrong, you can simply click on edit and you can change that to any of the post types that you've got created throughout your entire site using either toolset or any of the predefined WordPress uh, different post types. So we're going to say that's fine. So I'm going to cancel that. So everything is set up in there. So we're going to say that's fine. Click to add a new field again. This time we're going to put the next option in. So we'll set this to be one of the WYSIWYG editors. So we're going to say click to put that in there. Again, you can see we now get a range of field options. So for the field name, we're going to call this address. So let's put this event address. The field for the slug will predefine itself. Again, if we'd set the wrong field, we could do that. Change it in there. Event address, default value. We're going to leave that because obviously there is going to be no default value because it's going to be individual based upon any of the different kind of information you're going to put in any of the events. Do we want to include this information in the search? Well, that could be quite useful. So we'll say, yes, let's do that. You see, we've got to go to text searching settings to build a search index. Well, we'll take a look at that in a future video. But this would say that it would search the information inside there and return results based upon a search, which is quite useful because if your website is all about events, you obviously want people to be able to search based upon a particular location. So that's a pretty cool thing. Finally, we're going to add another field, and in this one, we're just going to simply put in there about the price of the event. So you can see we've got the option for numbers and so on, but we're going to keep this one really, really easy, and we're going to say we're going to set this up to be a single line. So we're going to click on that, and we're going to say event price, single line, event price again in there. Any placeholder information, any default value. Again, all these different options. You can go through, 
define exactly what's relevant to what you're doing. And actually, we're going to put one more option in there. So let's add a new field. What we're going to do is we're going to set that to be an image. And we're just going to call this event image. There we go. Everything else is fine. And we'll just say we're happy with all of that. So we can come back up to the top and say save field group. That will now go through and save all those different fields and associate that with our events page. And now when we go through and create any events, those new fields will be associated to those particular post types. So let's just jump over to the events and take a look at where we put some information in, how all these fields are displayed. So let's go to the events section on the left hand side and we're going to come down and we're going to say add new. Click on there. And you can see now we've got our normal WordPress kind of layout page. You'll see we've got the title at the top, we've got our normal editor, we've got a couple of new entries at the top, which is all to do with the tool set, different options we've got installed in there. Now if we scroll down, you can see all the fields that we just set up on there, the event date, the event address, price and image and so on, are now all listed in there as well. So we now have those custom fields associated with our events. So let's go and create a new event. Let's add some content in there and see how this all works. Okay, so let's just give this a name and we'll call this sample event one. Drop in some text information in there. Go through and set the date. So we'll say this is for the coming Saturday, for example. So you can see that pre-fills the date and everything out on there. We'll put the address in. Okay, so just basic information in there. The event price, and we'll call this 10.99, and we'll select an image. And we'll just browse our library, we'll choose this one, and we'll say select. You can see it now shows us a thumbnail underneath as well, and what we're gonna do is gonna set the featured image to contain the same image. And you can see we've got categories on the right-hand side because we associated that taxonomy. We also have tags available to us in there, so we can just say, well, this is gonna be a concert, and we can add a new category in there and we'll say concerts. Add that in and associate that. And then we just click on publish in the same way that we would with any other kind of post or page inside WordPress. So we've now created our first sample event. You can see that once we save that, it tells us that again, there's no template or archive associated with this, so it can't display it yet. But we're going to address that in a few moments. Let's come back up to all events and take a look at what's going on. So you can see there's our sample event under the category of concerts with a tag of concert and it's published one minute ago. So there's the basics. We've now created the ability to add in our own new events. We've added associated custom fields with that that are applicable to specifically to events. So you set up all the basics now of creating that event. We now need to go through and show how we can display that using OceanWP toolset and also Elemental. So let's just jump onto that next. So we're now ready to start creating the templates for both the actual event and also for the event archive. Now, as you can see, we're back at the toolset dashboard and we've got the first three sections in the admin all completed, the post type fields and taxonomies. We're now ready to move on to the template and the archives. You can see we've got these little warnings to tell us that currently we have no template associated with either of these different sections. So what we need to do is create our first template. Now this is quite easy. What we're gonna do is click on Create Template. That's gonna take us over to the new view section and we can start creating our layout. Now by default, it puts in template four and then it puts in the name of whatever the sort of the setting you put in there in your tool set is. So you can see we've got template for events. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rename this to something a bit more, makes a bit more sense for me. So we're gonna call this default event template. You can see I can also change the slug so I can come in there and I can do the same in there if I want to, just making sure that I put underscores between each of the spaces. Uh, okay to that. So we've now got our template set up, ready to start creating the various different areas that we want to work with. Now, before we start going through and taking a look at setting all the different layout options we want with the page, let's just have a brief overview of what's going on on the page. You can see we have this block at the top with a series of little sort of orange boxes. If you consider this to be a basic visual editor area, we'll come back to that in a moment and we'll see how we can start working with that. 
Now below that you'll see we've got theme options. Now this is because we're working with the Ocean WP theme, so I've got that installed. If you don't use Ocean WP or you have a different theme installed, you may or may not see specific options associated with your theme listed below. So if I just give you a brief overview of what this does, it'll give you an insight into the control we have at this level. Now these theme options work in several different ways. We can work with them on a page-by-page -page basis, so when we set up these templates, we can override the default settings that we've set up as part of the customizer for Ocean WP. So you can see we've got, for example, if we come down to header general, you can see we've got header style. It says use theme settings. In other words, use the default setting we've set up and configured inside the customizer. Now you can override that if you want to. You can see we can just choose from any of the different options we have available. So all the different kind of header styles, we can pick and choose from there. We can do things like header height. You can see we've got header full width, page title, and so on. So if we want to override the way certain other things, for example, the blog post archive and the blog post listings, we may want this to operate in a slightly different fashion where we can override various different settings that have been set up in the customizer at this point. So it's really great to see this level of integration right the way built into Toolset. Anyway, let's just jump back to the top and where we've got this visual editor area. Now this is a very simple visual editor. You can see these are basically one row with multiple columns laid out in there. If we want to add additional rows, we can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a very basic simple layout. So what you can do on this point is we can click and then we can just drag over to increase or decrease the size of the area we want to work with and what particular building block widget we want to place in there. So let's start off by keeping this really simple and straightforward. Let's click and we'll create a three, uh, four column section. Now we've got a range of different widgets we can drop in there. Now this works in a very similar fashion to things like Elementor and Visual Composer and so on, but it's really not to the same level of functionality. But it gives us some of the things we need to build this page up. So the first thing we're going to do is drop in the information, the meta information we've placed specific to an event. For example, the price, the address, the date, and so on. So to do that, we can easily just choose the visual, visual editor area and say insert the cell. That will open up your normal visual editor where we can start dropping in the various different fields and views from the tool set that we've set up. So you can see we've got the visual editor you used to with WordPress. We've got Add Media if we wanted to use that. We've also got Cred Forms if we're dealing with forms. What we're going to do is we're going to keep it simple and use fields and views. So we click on there. This will give us all the different user information we can pull in or the information we've created throughout our various different sections of our WordPress setup. So you can see things like post data, taxonomy, user data, basic data, and so on. Now each one of these is selectable. And that will just drop in the short code specific to that particular display function, display widget, whatever it is we're dropping in there. Hope that makes sense. What we're looking for is the event details. So these are the custom things that we set up right back at the beginning when we created our event section. So what we can do is we can just click for the event date. That will then drop in the options for us. So you can see we can choose how this is to be displayed. So we're going to say we want to show this as this particular date format. You can create custom or you can choose from any of the options. You can even show a calendar in there. So we say insert, insert short code and there's the short code for that particular piece of information to be displayed. Now we can keep repeating this. So let's just go to the next line, do the same again. So we're going to come up to fields and views. We're going to put in the event price, insert the short code. And next up, we're going to put the address in there. So we'll say we'll drop the event address in. Again, we can just choose to display this or we can display field without any formatting. So if we want to, we could easily go through and override this information or the styling and we can set it up to be specific to the way we want it to display. Insert short code, so we're going to leave that as is. So there's putting the basic information in there, but at this point, nobody would really know what the heck it means. So what we can do is we can easily come in and we can prepend that with some information that says exactly what each of these pieces of information relate to. So we're going to say this is event date. We're going to put in event price and finally event address. So you can see by having the visual editor that we used to with WordPress, we can easily come in and specify exactly what information we displayed and we can then go through and format it. So we can make these bold just so everything looks nice and neat and tidy. 
Uh, there we go. So once we've done that, you can see we've got some other options should we want to use them. So for example, you can display images with responsive size, display disable automatic paragraphs. We can specify what HTML tag is used to wrap this information. We can even apply tag IDs and tag classes. So if we wanted to target those with custom CSS, we could do things like that. Like I say, let's keep it simple for this first video. So let's click on create. And there's our first little block of information, which has the date, price, and address. So now we can repeat that procedure, click, drag over for the next block. This time, instead of using the visual editor where we want to drag and drop those bit, sort of different blocks in, we're going to say we want to pull in the post content, which is the main body content that's going to be displayed. So for this, we'll say, yep, we want to insert that, insert the cell. Again, you can see we get the option for the HTML tag, how we want to wrap this. So again, we've got a range of different options we can use in there. The tag ID and the tag class all available to us. So we can click create. So that's created our basic layout. Now what we can do is we can click on preview layout and we can take a look to make sure we're happy with that. If not, we can come back in and make some changes. So let's hit preview layout. That will open up a new tab and we can now see what this is going to look like. So you can see that we've got the title, the image, We've got the body text and we've got the information we put in, which is the address, the event date and the price and so on. So all that information is in there. You can see that we're using the theme settings. So if you wanted to override that, we can easily go back and do that. So let's just take a look at that as an example. So let's close this down and let's scroll down. And we're going to say that the header style, for example, or the header and the page title, we're going to remove the page title. So let's preview the layout again. And once we do that, you'll see now that the page title has disappeared. We can also come back in and override this. We can say we don't want any sidebar on there. We want this to be full width. Well, we can disable the sidebar, preview our layout, and we can take a look. And you can see there's everything laid out the way we want it to. And now we've got rid of that right column. Now, if you're wondering why this image is showing up, that's because as part of the theme setup through the customizer, that is set to display as part of the post display. Obviously, again, we can override that if we want to, but for now, we'll leave that as is. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Save on there, and we've now created our default event template. So if we just jump back to the dashboard, you can see now that the template has been set up. So that's the post template. So we can now take a look at what the post looks like. The next one we need to do is the archive. In other words, the listing of all the different events that we have available. So let's take a look at creating that next. OK, so let's go ahead now and start creating the archive to show the list of posts or the list of events that we have available. So you see I'm back in the toolset dashboard and you can see that I've got the archive option and we now need to go through and create that. So let's click on create archive. That's going to take us back over to the layout we saw in the previous example. This is going to be slightly different. Let's just change the name of this and we're going to call this event archive and we're going to do the same for the slug. OK, so we've now got all the same options available, but we need to do it slightly differently. So let's click and create the basics for our list. OK, so now the previous example, we took a look at the visual edit and the post content. Because we're working with the loop that's part of WordPress, we need to do this slightly differently. So if we scroll down, you can see we've got three different widgets for lists and loops. We've got content template, WordPress archive and view. For this one, we're going to use the, uh, the WordPress archive. So we're going to click on that. That's going to give us a little bit of information and ask us, are we happy with this? And we want to insert this into insert the cell. So we say, yes, we do. That now opens up a new pop up that allows us to choose how we want this archive cell to work. We've got the options we've seen previously, which is the HTML tags. We're going to leave those as they are. What we're interested in is the WordPress archives at the top. So you can see we've got create a new WordPress archive or use an existing archive. For this, we're going to create a new archive. So we're going to make sure that's selected and click on Create. That's going to take us over to the second step now in the process. So we've got a range of different things we can do at this point, and we're just going to go and set the basics. You can see we've got the ability to set the ordering, query filters, pagination, loop output, and so on. Well, one of the most important things we want to do is add a filter in there. At the moment, if we left this as it was, it would just pump out all of the information, all of the events we put in there, no matter what status, whether they're draft status, published, pending review, no matter what they are, we need to make sure that it only outputs the ones that we want. So we click on add a filter. You can see it says filter by and we can click and we can choose from all the different options we can filter this information. What we're interested in is post status. So we click on that. You can see nothing happens until we click on add query filter. 
that now allows us to go through and say, well, what do we want to query this against and what result do we want to be able to show? So you can see all the different post statuses are available in there. And what we need to do is specify exactly what meets the criteria that we want. I'm going to choose publish. I only want to show ones that are published. Now click on save on this, that saves my query filter and you can see select posts with the status of publish. If we want to go in and edit that, we can click on edit. If we want to add a second, a third, a fourth and so on filter, we can do that as well. So we can build a really complex filters to make sure that it only outputs the information that we want it to output. Next up, we've got the pagination. You can see you've got various different options for no pagination, enabled and manual transition and page reload, or to use manual transition and Ajax. Choose what you think is relevant to you. Next up, we've got the loop output. And then we've also got the option for the WordPress archive. So you can see this has got some basic default information in there. What we are going to do is come back up to the loop output editor, and we're going to click on the loop wizard. Now, don't worry, this kind of looks a little complicated, and Toolset is one of those things that is very, very powerful, but you do need to have a basic knowledge of some things like a little bit of HTML and CSS knowledge is going to give, go a long way. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify this is going to use the bootstrap grid. I'm going to click on that, and you can see this pops up and says, well, how do you want to output this? Number of columns. Now, don't get confused with this thinking that the number of columns basically means that we can put like an image in the left-hand column and some information in the right. It's not. This is how your information is going to be output. If we set this to two columns, we'd have one event in the first column, another event in the second column, and then the, the rows would repeat right the way down. So we'd have two columns laid out like that. We're going to let, leave this at one column. I'm going to leave everything else as is. I'm going to click on Next. This now goes through and says, right, OK, you want one column. What do you want to put in there? So you can see we can click to add a field. This now pops up and shows us the field information we have that's available if we go through the various other methods of inserting content into our page. So all we need to do is click on there, and you can see we can filter that by typing at the top. But all the same widgets we looked at earlier on are all listed and all categorized and grouped together. So your taxonomy, user the basic data, right the way down through to your event details, which is what we set up. So. Let's put some basics in there. So we want the post title with the link, so it's clickable. We're going to click on Add a New Field. We do the same thing again. So this one now we're going to go in and we're going to put Event, and we're going to say Date. Click on Edit on there, and you can see that brings up the same options we saw in the previous example. So we're going to say we want that format that we've used, and click on Insert. Add a new field. Again, search this down for Events. We're going to come into the Event Price. Finally, we're going to add in the last of the event information, which is the event address. And one more field just to add some information in there. We're going to come down and we're going to say we want this to be the post body. Obviously, you could use the excerpt and so on. It's entirely up to you what you want to use in there. But we're going to say, OK, we've got all the different fields we want in there. If we want to reorder those, you can simply drag and drop to position them where you want in the order. Once you're done with that, let's make sure that's in the right place. We're going to click on Finish. That's now going to give us a little sort of pop up and say, well, you know, this has done what you asked us to do kind of thing. Or we say close on that. Let's just save that. And if we scroll down, all of the information, all the different fields we've used are all listed in there. So now we can go into this and we can change the actual configuration of this. So we can, if we wanted to, we could change this to a heading one. So let's just put the HTML code in there for heading one. And H1 for there. If we want to prepend these like we did in the last one, so we can say event date and we can do event price, event address. If we want to, we can do the same as before. We can bold these to make sure they stand out, make sure everything is laid out tidy. And if we want to, we can easily come down underneath and let's just say, for example, we want to put horizontal row in there. We can do that by adding the code into that if we want to. All very easy. And we're just going to finally put some line breaks at the end of these to make sure each one sits on its own individual line just to separate things out nicely. So you can see all these things are just your standard HTML formatting. So we can just click on the update 
And then we could do is come down to save and close this view to return to the layout. So we'll click on there and that'll take us back into the layout view. So you can see that's now inserted the placeholder for that widget in there. Again, like before, if we want to go through and set up any of these different options to do with the theme, we can do that at this point as well. And we're going to click on save. And let's just preview that layout and we can see exactly what this looks like. So there you go. You can see now everything is formatted nicely. If we want to click on event one or event two, for example, we can click. That'll now take us through to the actual event itself and show us all the information for that particular event. So very quick and easy. So we've gone through and covered quite a lot already. We've taken a look at how we can create our own custom events, how we can add in what fields we want in there, custom fields. We've taken a look at how we can apply custom taxonomies. We can apply tags and different things along those lines. We've then gone through and we've created our own custom layout pages to display not only the event list like we just covered, but also the individual event itself. So you've seen how powerful Toolkit really is in creating great looking content. We've also seen how we can harness the power of of Ocean WP to work alongside the customizer or to override the customizer settings. So make sure that each one of our archives or our pages is set up to display the, exactly the way that we want it to. Okay, so now that we've seen how we can use the templates as part of Toolset, let's take a look at how we can harness some of the power of this inside Elementor itself. Now, it's beyond the scope of this video to cover all the different options that are available, so I'm just going to show you one basic technique, but this should give you a great way of starting out using Elementor, and then you can build your page layout up around that. So let's take a look at that. So what we're going to do is we're back in the dashboard for Toolset. We're going to come down to the Views option. We're going to click on there, and that'll bring us through into the Views section. Now, the Views is a great way of to create a content layout that we want to sort of use in other places. So we want to inject that content into our own design. And we can use that through short codes. By using that, we can link that through into Elementor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new view. Now we do that, we've got to first of all give it a name. So we're going to call this Elementor View All. So we know what it's about. Next up, we've got the option to specify how we want this new view to be displaying our content. Do we want to display all the results? Do we want to display the results with pagination, with a slider, and so on? What we're going to do is we're going to say to display all results. So we're going to click to create a view. That will go through, and it gives us a view that's very similar to what we saw earlier on, which is where we can set up the filters and so on. So the first thing we're going to do is specify the content selection. In other words, what content do we want to use in this view? You can see you have the option to basically filter things by the post type, by taxonomy, and by user. So you can see if we click over to taxonomy, it shows us all the taxonomies we have available to us, which is based upon categories or tags, for example. And if we choose users, you can see we can go through and specify the user level that will display this content. We're going to keep this simple and use the post type, and we're going to link this into our events. So we're going to click events. Now you can see we've got some options based upon the choice that we've just made. We've got query options. We've got ordering, limit and offset, and query filter. Now, the only thing I'm interested in at this particular point is the query filter. So what we're going to do is, like we did previously, we're going to add a filter in there. We're going to specify to filter this based upon the status. We're going to add that query filter in. And finally, we're going to choose what status filter we want to use to filter this information out. I only want to show the published information. So we're going to do that, hit save. And we've basically gone through and said we want to use our events and only display the ones that are published. Next up, we're going to come down and you can see we have the loop output editor. Now, we used this previously, and what we're going to do is we're going to do the same again. So we're going to click to loop wizard. We're going to choose bootstrap. And we're going to set this to one column. So we're going to click on next. And now we're going to go through and quickly add our fields in there. So post title with a link. Add another field in, and we're going to keep this really simple because it's just the same routine over again. This time we're going to say post body. So we're just going to have those two pieces of information, and we're going to click on finish. So once you've done that, again, we get the little notification telling us there's the loop wizard and so on. We scroll down, there's our information, which we can then go through. And if we want to, we can format this. So let's just say, for example, we're going to set this one to be H3. And we do the same at the end. So we'll close those tags down. And if we want to, we could make those bold. So we can highlight that. Choose to make it bold. Okay, so we just apply some really basic formatting there. And again, we'll click on Update. Save all sections to make sure everything is saved out. And we should be pretty much good to go. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over to our pages section and we're going to add a new page in. So all we're going to do is click add new. That will open up the normal editor and what we're going to do is just name this and we'll say view all events. So now we've done that, we're just going to set a couple of other things up for this particular design layout. Content layout, and again, this is specific to OceanWP, I'm going to set this to be full width. And that's basically all I need to do. So I'm just going to publish that page. We're now ready to call in the information we want to display. Now, the easiest method for this, before we switch Elementor on, is to come to Fields and Views. Now, if we take a look, if we scroll right to the bottom, you can see we've got the option now for Post View. Now this is the view template we created just now. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Element or View All. You can see it gives us some options if we want to override the basic settings. I'm going to leave those as they are. So we're going to say Insert Shortcode, and that's now putting the shortcode to display that information for us. So what I'm going to do is just copy that. And I'm going to show you if we click Edit with Elementor, that'll take us into the Elementor Editor. But as you can see, nothing is inserted in there. So we could, if we wanted to, go through and insert this as a short code. So let's just take a look at that in action a second. So let's just drop a short code option in there, and we're going to replace that with the information. Now, the problem you've got with this is we can't actually edit the text in there at all. It is now literally configured as just a short code. So it's kind of limiting. Now there's a way around that. Let's just exit out of this, go back to the dashboard without saving our changes. We're going to do it, go back to the editor, the normal editor. I'll get rid of this error message at the top. What we're going to do is switch over to the text option and put that short code back in. So we're not in the visual version, we're in the text version. So this is only going to show us the actual bit of code we want to work with. Now let's just update the page a second. We're going to do, making sure we're still in text, click on edit with Elementor. What that's going to do is that's going to load Elementor in, and you can see now that's pulled in the information, the text, but this is where the beauty of this comes in. If we click on this, it's not using the shortcode editor. It's using the ordinary text editor. Now, if we pasted it in there, it wouldn't show us its information, but pulled it in for us. So what we can do is we can come into this, and we can now go through and start styling the text. So you can see, we jump over to the text styling. We can easily come in there. We can change the color of the text, for example. We can control typography. So we can now go in and we can control our main body text in there. We can choose a different font family. So we have a lot more control over how our information is displayed. Now, on top of this, we've also got the beauty of the fact we can start working with Elemento itself. So if we want to get in there and start creating more customized layouts, we can do that. So let's just say, for example, now at the bottom of this, we wanted to put the share options in there. Well, we can easily do that. Let's just come back over to our tabs and we'll say social. And we just say social icons, drop those underneath. You can see there's our social icons. We can set those position we want. How we want to sort of do this, we can do that. We can change the style on those, whatever we want to do with it. So we can now go through and start to pull in the power of working with Elementor to create more customized pages. We'd save on there. And we're going to do is take a look at that page in action. So let's take a look at that. Let's just jump back out of this and go back to our dashboard. And let's just view that page. So let's click and view the page. And then you can see we've now got our page using the power of Elementor to pull that in. We can style the text on there. We can put in social icons. We do everything we'd normally expect to do with Elementor. And that's pretty much where I want to wrap this video up. We've covered a whole range of different things using Toolset. We've created our own custom events section. We've gone through and done that. We've created custom page layouts. We've taken that one step further by pulling it into Elemental. We can get really creative. We've also tapped into the wonderful integration with OceanWP to give you a great platform for developing your websites using Toolset, Elemental, and OceanWP. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you'd like to find out more information about Toolset, Elementor, or OceanWP, all the applicable links are in the description below. And once again, a big thank you to Toolset for sponsoring this video. Well, if you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.